That, this is just such a really interesting, you know, business you've carved out with the within a business, mm -hmm. you know, and you're kind of at the uh, forefront of it. I don't imagine because one, the business model is pretty new of the Amazon like DSP providers. Yeah, yeah, correct. And so, uh, roughly two years ago, they rolled out Amazon DSP 2.0. We all saw the white trucks driving around our neighborhood, and they were that was the 1.0 model. Okay. And Amazon got their metrics and got the financials and figured out, okay, we got a good baseline. And then they said, we're going to tighten it up. And they tightened it up with the Amazon uh, 2.0. Mm -hmm. And the way it works is you're basically a staffing agency for Amazon. You get carte blanche to the warehouse. You get carte blanche to the trucks. Your overhead cost is fuel, phones, payroll, benefits. But one of the requirements with Amazon was within 90 days of inception, you have to get to 50 employees or 50 mm. drivers. Also, wow. wait, you yeah. have to go from startup to 50 Zero to 50, their in goal. In 90 days. That's part of their metrics. And they wow. give some lead way. And, and, you know, Newark, New Jersey might be different than Newark, Delaware. You know, yeah. so there's different lead ways. Um, but one of the requirements was to offer credible health insurance. And, you know, I had, you were talking earlier about referrals. So I had a client that was big in the telecom business and his partner was big into uh, kids entertainment, like the Moon Bounce business. Mm -hmm. And they, they merged together and they both were experienced. So they were very easy to deal with. They both independently owned multiple businesses. Um, I've helped them out in the past. And then they, they told me about the Amazon thing. And I, you know, I formulated a plan where uh, Amazon does have a preferred vendor, but the preferred vendor, uh, and not knocking the competition, but they weren't indigenous. They weren't local. They didn't have, um, you know, f uh, feet on the floor, you know, no. locally, mm -hmm. where I did. The other thing is their income requirement, their funding arrangement was set higher, and the employer was very uncomfortable with that cash outlay, that expense. Because that could easily blow up the model, yep. depending on how many people participate. So, you know, I kind of, uh, I listened to to both these gentlemen that I work with and, you know, what the demographics of the group, you know, these, these drivers are out on the road all day, they're barreling the warehouse and, you know, they do have the cell phones and they do use WhatsApp. And so what I did, I just created a script um, where they could text the drivers, hey, we're offering, you know, as of March 1st, we're rolling out these three plans, you know, gold, silver, bronze. Um, you, know, uh, you know, the employer is going to pay X amount of dollars. The deadline to apply is this. Uh, Dignity Insured is going to be available, you know, either at the warehouse or they have a meeting called a stand-up meeting in the parking lot. So I would attend stand-up meetings at, you know, 530 in the morning yeah. or go to the warehouse at 8 o'clock at night. Uh, the biggest part is chasing down these forms. And, you know, it's, you know, there's people that make things happen. There's people that watch things happen. There's people that wonder what happened. And it's the uh, the last two groups, you're, you're chasing all these forms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what I did was I just made it easy. You know, I, I helped.